Hi there, and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke, and today we're going to be showing you how to control LED strips. It's getting to that time of year again, to Halloween, and maybe you've got lots of awesome ideas to make a cool costume. Like maybe you've seen some of the cosplay costumes recently with lots of cool flashing lights, but you don't know how to do it. Usually we might need to learn soldering, and some advanced programming to control these lights. But with M5 and UI Flow, we've made it much easier for you. What we're going to need for today's project is some Grove connectors. You can buy them in our store at a meter length and shorter ones. Then we'll need some NeoPixel strips with these Grove connectors on. We sell them in 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, and a meter long. Um, and also we're going to need the M5 with the latest UI Flow firmware flashed on it. You can see some of these videos to see how to flash the firmware. And we'll also need an old sweater to attach the LEDs to. So first let's get started in testing a short strip to show some simple LED animations. First we'll connect a growth cable to either port A B or C on the M5. And then the other end will connect to the NeoPixel strip. Now we have a strip connected, we can test some simple blinking animations. Let's go to UI Flow, UI Flow and test the simple program. Okay, let's start by opening your browser and going to flow.m5stack.com. Open the top left corner, you can see the version is version 7.2, so you'll need to make sure your firmware is also the same or above. Let's rename the file, so when we save it, it's easier to find. NeoPixel Blink. And I'm going to need to drag a loop in because we're going to be flashing the LED over and over again. Then we'll add a unit. Units are for all the attachments that we add to the A, B, and C ports. This unit named RGB Multi is for the NeoPixel, and the count is for how many LEDs we have on our strip. I have 15 on mine, so I'll enter 15. Now we can see our RGB unit inside the Units column. Open it up, and let's drag Set RGB Multi from 1 to 5 RGB Color and these numbers refer to which LEDs we are going to turn on on the strip. So set your range and then you can keep the color as it is or change. Now we duplicate the same block and this time set the color to black. Black will essentially turn off the LEDs. Now without a wait between the blocks this is going to happen very fast so we're going to need to slow it down by adding some wait blocks from the timer section. We can add one after the red color and one after the black color. And then we can change the value to 0.5 seconds to make the flashing faster. Now that we've uploaded the code, we want to make sure that our Grove connector is plugged into the right socket. I'll be using the A port like I chose in my code. Now for the NeoPixel strip, you'll see on the back there's two arrows. The correct side is where the arrow is facing away from the port. So if you plug into the port with the arrow facing towards the port, then it's the wrong side. Make sure to choose this one. There's also a small A. And there we have it. It's flashing. Now let's try something a little bit more complex. Let's go back to UI Flow and program a result which has the lights lighting up one by one. This time we're going to add one extra NeoPixel strip. So we'll have to go into Units, set the port to B on RGB Multi and enter the amount of LEDs again. For this code, we're going to need to create a variable for the position of the light. We'll call it pos. 
and then we can set the position in the setup to be zero. Now we'll need to create a loop for our code to keep on looping inside. Then we go into the loops to find repeat block. And we're going to need to change this to repeat for the amount of LEDs that you have on your strip. And we go to units and find the RGB multi block. This time we'll be using a different one, index 1. And where this 1 is, we'll be replacing it with the pause variable that we created. And we'll also change that variable by 1 every time it makes the loop. Therefore, updating the position of the LED each time. And we'll drag in another and change it to multi 1. This is for our second strip attached to port B and set the color. Now to make the LED cycle down the strip we just change this to minus 1 and we can set the RGB color of each of the strips to a different color so when the LEDs cycle back there will be a different color and don't forget that we need to add a weight in there to set how fast the LEDs change position and I'm going to use 0.01 so I have a quick changing animation let's upload and check it out and here we have the result for the last piece we're going to do some LED strips that increase in brightness and then slowly fade out, just like the LEDs are breathing. This is the trickiest code, but we'll take it through step by step to show you how to do it. Let's get back to UI flow to see how it's done. For the final program, we can use some parts from our previous program. Start by removing everything from within the loop and deleting the repeat blocks. Then we can rename the pause variable to brightness. This time instead of repeat for amount of times blocks, we'll need repeat while, which will repeat something while a condition is true. Let's duplicate it so we have two of them inside our loop. We'll also need to use some of the blocks from the logic section. Let's take this equals block and add the brightness variable in the first slot. Then instead of equals, we'll set it to less than or equal to. And then set the number of brightness to 15. We don't want the brightness to be too high or we'll be blinding ourselves. Then while these conditions are true, we're going to be changing the brightness by one or by minus one to decrease to increase and decrease the brightness. Now let's duplicate this block and set this to more than zero. Okay, now our logic is fine. Now we just need to add the RGB light blocks and the weight blocks. So we can recycle these weight blocks and the rest we'll throw into the trash. This time we'll need the blocks we used in the first program and we'll set the range of LEDs to the same as our LED strip, minus 15. Then we can change the color if needed. Then we add a brightness block and set our variable brightness into the brightness block of the RGB block. Now repeat the same steps for the other LED strip connected to port B. We can do this by duplicating and changing it one to RGB multi one. Now we'll duplicate all of these and add them to the second repeat while loop. And there we have it. 
That's our code done for this last program. Let's upload it to test it out. For the final part of designing your costume, you'll need to make some holes in your sweater for each of the components of the M5 and your light setup to fit through. And then we'll need some long growth cables. While the M5 will last for a couple of hours with the LED strips plugged in, we recommend that you use a USB power bank for backup power. If you have the M5 base with the Lego connectors, you can put the base on the inside and then snap it together. Now we have all our growth connectors in place. Let's attach the LED strip. And there we have it. Let's see it in action. That's all for today. If you have any questions about the code that we made today or any of the LED strips, you can leave a comment down in the comment section or you can go to our forums for more information. Hope you had fun making the costume today. Take care and see you next time. Goodbye.